Hello networking enthusiasts, welcome back to the channel. Today I'd like to show you how fast and easy it is to set up a site-to-site -site VPN using Tailscale. Whole process takes no more than five minutes. Uh, what they did to make the experience user-friendly is fascinating. My name is Philip. let's get started. Tailscale is a software-defined mesh VPN that allows you to securely connect your devices and applications. It creates an overlay network on top of an existing internet connection. It's very similar to Zero Tier, however, for peer-to-peer -peer connectivity, it uses WireGuard tunnels. If you are not familiar with mesh VPNs, they operate in a bit different way from a regular VPN. And like a typical hub and spoke topology, where all traffic passes through a central hub, in a mesh VPN, nodes try to establish direct peer to peer connections. How do the nodes know about each other? In Tailscale, when node starts up, it registers itself with Tailscale coordination server. These servers help manage keys and facilitate connections, but does not handle the actual data traffic. Here's how it works. Each node generates a pair of keys. Then the node contacts the coordination server and leaves its public key and information about its current location. Then the node downloads a list of public keys and addresses in its network, which other nodes have left on the coordination server. With information about IP addresses, ports, and public keys, nodes attempt to establish direct peer-to-peer -peer connections using UDP hole punching with WireGuard protocol. If that's not possible, traffic is relayed via a special relay server. The actual process is a bit more complex. Uh, if you want more details, I will leave a link down below uh, to the vendor documentation. Let's proceed to the demo. Here's what we have. There are two nodes in two separate locations. Node 2 has 192.168.10.231 IP and Node 4 has 192.168.12.231 IP. Each node is sitting behind a NAT that allows the node to go to the internet. On top of that, we have node 3 that's in the first private network with 10.232 IP and node 5 that's in the second private network with 12.232 IP. What we are trying to achieve is connectivity between the 10/24 and 12/24 private networks. To do that, we'll set up a side-to-side -side VPN tunnel between node 2 and node 4 and then add a static route on node 3 and node 5 to go to the remote private networks via node 2 and node 4. Usually you would see the VPN tunnel provisioned on the routers and not on the internal servers, as in such an approach you don't have to modify the routing table of internal nodes. However, we simulate a scenario where we don't have access to the router but still want to have side-to-side -side reachability. Mind that we won't be installing any software on node 3 nor node 5. All VPN traffic will be terminated on node 2 and node 4. First, let's sign up for the Tailscale service. I will head over to tailscale.com and click on Get Started. Next, we need to select the identity provider. We have options like Google, Microsoft, GitHub, Apple, or any other provider compatible with OpenID Connect. Tailscale delegates identity management to these external services. I will choose Google and select My User Account. We'll then be asked if we'll use the service for personal or business purposes. We'll add our first device later, so I will click skip the introduction to access the main management console. A few important points. The user we've just signed up with becomes the network owner, essentially the super admin account, and there can be only one owner. At the top, you will see the network name. I'm using Google Cloud Identity with my own domain, but you can use your Gmail account if you prefer. One advantage of using your own domain is that any member of that domain can join the network. Next, let's add a device to our network by installing the Tailscale agent on the node. I will click on Add Device. Tailscale supports all major operating systems. We'll choose Linux. Copy the installation script and run it on node 2. The script will automatically detect the Linux flavor and install the Tailscale DE service. That's the node agent. To join our overlay network, we need to execute a sudo tailscale app. This command will provide a link to authenticate the node. I will open this link in the browser. Here we need to authenticate either with the owner account or any account that's part of the Linux Cloud Hacks domain. Now the node 2 device is part of our overlay network known as the tailnet. In the machines tab of the management console, you will see the new node that has joined our network. 
You can view the node name, the user who added the device, the assigned IP address, the client version, the kernel version, and the connection status. Keep in mind that in the free tier, you can add up to 100 devices. Let's add a second device. I will click on Add Device, select the Linux operating system, and copy the installation script. Next, I will go to Node 4, which is our second device located in a different location, and run the installation script. Once the software is installed, I will join the network by executing sudo tailscale app. Let's authenticate the node by copying the provided URL, open it in new tab and clicking connect. In the machines tab of the management console, we'll see that the second node has been successfully added to the overlay network. Let's check the reachability between the nodes over the VPN network. First, I will verify the status of tailscale D service on node 2. It shows active and connected. Now let's check the assigned IP address using the tailscale IP command. By default, tailscale assigns the IP before address from the 100.64/10 network used for carrier grade NAT. This range is chosen to avoid overlap with RFC 1980 private ranges. It also assigns an IPv6 address from a subset of IPv6 unique local address range. These IP addresses are allocated to TailSK0 interface. To check the VPN connection status, we'll use the TailSK status command. This will display all nodes in our network, their IP addresses and their connection status. Let's check the connectivity between node 2 and node 4. I will use the TailSK ping command, which will confirm if the connection works and show the route taken by the packet. Connection is confirmed. When two nodes communicate, TailSK attempts to establish a direct WireGuard tunnel between them using UDP hole punching. Additionally, TailSK uses relay servers called DERP servers spread worldwide. While a direct connection is being established, or if it's not possible, encrypted WireGuard packets are forwarded via the DERP servers. If we look at the ping results, the first packet was relayed by the DERP server in Warsaw, and the second ping was sent via a direct connection. Executing the TailSK status command again will show us that the connection to Node 4 is active, it's a direct connection, and there's the public IP of Node 4, the remote end. If a direct connection can't be established, you see the relay server listed here. A very useful command is TailSK NetCheck. It prints the current networking conditions, tells us if the UDP protocol is supported, as some firewalls block UDP, provides our public IP and port used for WireGuard tunnel, and gives us information about relay server that is being used and latency to other relay servers. One last thing to mention. If we look at the DNS configuration, we'll see quad 100 address. In TailSK, this is the local host address with a DNS tab resolver that can resolve node names. Let me go to node 4 and start the iPerf server. Switching to node 2, I will run iPerf client and use node 4 name instead of its IP address. There you have it, connection works. Okay, connectivity between our Linux server works. They will function as a gateway nodes interconnecting our two private networks. To make things more interesting, I will add a third node. This will be a Mac OS device simulating a client that needs access to both private networks from home. Let's install the TailSK agent on the Mac OS device. In the TailSK admin console, I will click uh, Add device and then select Mac OS. We can either download the installation file from the download section or add it from the App Store. Let's go with the latter. I will copy the link and open it in the web browser. This takes me directly to the App Store. Let's click Install. OK, it's installed. Now I will click Get Started, then Allow VPN configuration, and finally sign into the network. I will select Google as the identity provider and authenticate with the same user who created the network. I will click Connect to join the network. TailSK can start automatically when I log into the computer, which is what we want. If we look at the machine tab of the TailSK web console, we'll see our Mac mini device available. Let's check if we can reach Node 2. I will try the SSH command. It works. Now let's try connecting to Node 4 with SSH. It also works. Remember, all connectivity happens across point-to-point -point WireGuard tunnels using the 100.64-10 network. As the connectivity between our two servers and one client works, let's check how traffic to other TailSK nodes is routed. 
I will consult the routing table with IP route get to see how to get to Mac OS client from Node 2. Okay, traffic from Node 2 to Mac OS client will be sent via Tailscale 0 interface, but the route is in a special routing table with number 52. Let me display entries from that table. Every time a node joins our network, a routing entry is added to table 52 so that the host knows to send traffic to other members of the network via TailsK0 interface. It's time to work on the side-to-side -side connection. Just to remind you, we have 192.168.10 private network behind node 2. As a test client, there's node 3 that's part of that network. There's also 192.168.12 private network behind node 4 and node 5 that's part of that network. If we look at node 3 from the first private network, it knows nothing about the other private network. Its routing entry for that network points to the default gateway. I will go to node 2 and execute tailscale app like I would want to join the network, but I will add two more parameters. Accept routes. If any other node is advertising routes, I want to put them into my routing table. Advertise routes, I want to advertise the 10 24 network that's directly connected to my other interface. Okay, I got a warning that IP forwarding is disabled. Let's fix that. I will open the sysctl file that holds kernel configuration and uncomment lines responsible for IPv4 and IPv6 traffic forwarding. Let's save the file and load the configuration with sysctl-p. There you have it. Advertising a private network to TailsK is just a single line. Now, every member of the TailScale network should know that in order to get to 192.168.10/24 network, it needs to go via node 2, as it's advertising that network. Let's repeat the same step on node 4. I will issue TailScale app, mention that I want to accept any advertised routes, and I want to advertise the 12/24 private network to TailScale. Let's also enable packet forwarding here. I will open the sysctl configuration file and uncomment lines responsible for IPv4 and IPv6 packet forwarding. Let's save and apply the configuration. Mind that if you don't provide an accept route switch, you indicate that you don't want to receive advertised routes from other nodes. Okay, both our nodes advertise their private networks and accept uh, route advertisements. However, there's one more step we need to take. If we look at our Tailscale console, we'll see the subnet tags next to our nodes. That indicates that those nodes advertise routes. There's also an exclamation mark. That means that the route advertisements have not been approved by the administrator. Let's do that now. I will click on those three dots and select Edit Route Settings. Here I just approve the route. Okay, the exclamation mark is gone. Let's repeat this step for other nodes. If we look at the contents of routing table 52, we'll find that 12 slash 24 network is available. In other words, from node 2, I should be able to reach the private network behind node 4. If we list the contents of routing table on node 4, we'll discover 10 slash 24 network. That's the network behind node 2. Let's check if that works. I will go to node 2 and try ping node 5, that's part of the private network behind node 4. Works. Let's try the other way around. I will go to node 4 and try ping node 3, that's part of private network behind node 2. Works. Let's repeat the same test from our Mac OS client. There's our primary network interface. Let's check how to get to node 3, that's sitting in the private network behind node 2. The traffic should be routed via UTune 4 interface. Let's check how to get to node 5 sitting in the other private network. Okay, it's also pointing towards UTune 4 interface. Let me check the UTune 4 interface then. That's our TailsK interface. All is clear. I will ping node 3. Works. Uh, I will ping node 5. Works. So we have reachability between our TailsK nodes as well as reachability with the private networks. If we go to the node 3, that's the node in the first private network, and check the routing to node 5, that's in the second private network, the route points to the default gateway. One way to fix that would be to use the node 2 as the default gateway. However, it's not always possible. Second best thing that we can do is add a route to the 12-24 network via node 2. Let's switch to node 5 and check the route to node 3. As expected, it goes via the default gateway. Let's add a static route to the 10-24 network via node 4. 
I will check reachability between the nodes in two separate private networks. OK, connectivity is there. If we trace the path from node 3 to node 5, the first hop is node 2, then the traffic enters the tunnel, next hop is node 4, and finally it goes to node 5. There are two more things I'd like to show you. The MTU on the primary interface is 1500, and MTU on the tail square interface is 1280. As MTU differs on both links, it's best to perform MTU clamping. In other words, advertise a smaller TCP maximum segment size so it can fit into the MTU. Uh, with this one-liner, all TCP SYN packets sent out via Telescope interface will have its MSS advertised to a lower value. If you want to learn more about it, as MTU mismatch is a common issue in the VPN world, please watch my other video on MTU. Let's perform the same step on the other node. For demo purposes, I've just added it from the command line, but for the rule to load at start, you should add it to the IP tables configuration or startup script. To test end-to-end -end flow between the nodes in private networks, let me run iperf server on node 5 and then run iperf client on node 3. That's what we wanted, side-to-side -side connectivity. Second thing I'd like to mention is that if we look at the iperf server running on node 5, the source IP the traffic originated from is node 4 and not node 3. The thing is, by default, nodes that export the routes perform source address translation so the traffic knows how to get back. If we want to have a fully routed network and see the real IP without any NAT, we can disable this feature. Let's go to node 2 and issue the same tailscale app command, but this time we'll add the snat subnet routes equals false. Let's do the same on our other VPN peer, that's node 4. If we rerun the speed test, we'll see the traffic originates from node 3, that's its real IP. That's it for setting up a side-to-side -side VPN with Tailscale. We've successfully interconnected our private networks and added a client device to access them from anywhere. I've told you it can be done in 5 minutes. It can. Tailscale GUI is super intuitive and has lots of features. It's very easy to set up an exit node or establish a remote SSH connection from your web browser. It also supports tags for traffic filtering. Very nice feature. I encourage you to give it a try as it may be a VPN solution for you. How does it compare to zero tier? That's a discussion for a separate video. One thing to mention is that unfortunately, Tailscale cannot route layer 2 traffic, so if that's your requirement, you should stick with zero tier. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more tech tutorials. Hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. If you have any questions or need further assistance, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and see you in the next video.